Act One of The Bourgeois Gentleman by Moliere. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bourgeois Gentleman by Moliere. Translated by Philip Dwight Jones. The Cast Monsieur Jourdain, Bourgeois. Read by Todd. Madame Jourdain, read by Leanne. Lucille, read by Lydia. Nicole, read by Charlotte Duckett. Cleont, read by Thomas Peter. Coviel, read by Peter Tucker. Dorant, read by Thomas Ibarra. The Role of Dorimine, read by Sarah Holtz. Music Master, read by Leanne Yao. The Pupil of the Music Master, read by Zames Curran. Dancing Master, read by Beth Thomas. Fencing Master, read by Jennifer Fournier. Philosophy Master, read by John Burlinson. Taylor, read by Adrian Strowitz. Taylor's Apprentice, read by Arielle Lipshaw. First Lackey, read by David Olson. Second Lackey, read by Marianne. First Man, read by Mika. Second Man, read by Thomas Peter. Woman, by Nikki Myers. First Male Singer, recorded by Mika. Second Male Singer, read by Chuck Williamson. Woman Singer, recorded by Nikki Myers. Musician, read by Chuck Williamson. Narrated by Abai. The scene is Monsieur Jourdain's house in Paris. Act One. Scene One. Music master, dancing master, musicians, and dancers. The play opens with a great assembly of instruments, and in the middle of the stage is a pupil of the music master seated at a table composing a melody which Monsieur Jourdain has ordered for a serenade. Music master to musicians. Come, come into this room. Sit there and wait until he comes. Dancing master to dancers. And you too, on this side? Music master to pupil. Is it done? Yes. Let's see. This is good. Is it something new? Yes, it's a melody for serenade that I sent him to composing here, while waiting for our man to awake. May I see it? You'll hear it, with a dialogue, when he comes. He won't be long. Our work, yours and mine, is not trivial at present. This is true. we found here such a man as we both need. This is a nice source of income for us. This... Monsieur Joudon, with the visions of nobility and gallantry that he has got into his head. You and I should hope that everyone resembled him. Not entirely. I could wish that he understood better the things that we give him. It's true that he understands them poorly, but he pays well, and that's what our art needs, now more than anything else. As for me, I admit, I feed a little on glory. Applause touches me and i hold that in all the fine arts it is painful to produce for dolts to endure the barbarous opinions of a fool about my choreography it is a pleasure don't tell me otherwise to work for people who can appreciate the fine points of an art who know how to give a sweet reception to the beauties of a work and by pleasurable approbations gratify us for our labour yes the most agreeable recompense we can receive for the things we do is to see them recognized and flattered by an applause that honors us there is nothing in my opinion that pays us better for all our fatigue and it is an exquisite delight to receive the praises of the well-informed i agree and i enjoy them as you do there is surely nothing more agreeable than the applause you speak of but that incense does not provide a living your praises do not provide a comfortable existence. It is necessary to add something solid, and the best way to praise it is to praise with cash in hand. He is a man, it's true, whose insight is very slight, who talks nonsense about everything and applauds only for the wrong reasons, 
But his money makes up for his judgments. He has discernment in his purse. His praises are in cash. And this ignorant bourgeois is worth more to us, as you see, than the educated nobleman who introduced us here. There is some truth in what you say, but I find that you lean a little too heavily on money, and material interest is something so base that a man of good taste should never show an attachment to it. You are ready enough to receive the money your man gives you. Assuredly, but I don't place all my happiness in it and I could wish that together with his fortune he had some good taste in things. I could wish it too. That's what both of us are working for as much as we can. But, in any case, he gives us the means to make ourselves known in this world, and he will pay others if they will praise him. Here he comes. Scene 2 Monsieur Jourdain, two lackeys, music master, dancing master, pupil, musicians, and dancers. Well, gentlemen, what's this? Are you going to show me your little skit? How? What little skit? Well, the... what do you call it? Your prologue or dialogue of songs and dances. Uh-huh. You find us ready for you. I kept you waiting a little, but it's because I'm having myself dressed today like the people of quality, and my tailor sent me some silk stockings that I thought I would never get on. We are here, only to wait upon your leisure. I want you both to stay until they have brought me my suit, so that you may see me. Whatever you would like. You will see me fitted out properly, from head to foot. We have no doubt of it. I had this robe made for me. It's very attractive. My tailor told me the people of quality dress like this in the mornings. It's marvelously becoming. Hey, lackeys, my two lackeys. What do you wish, sir? Nothing. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. To the two masters. What say you of my liveries? They're magnificent. Monsieur Jourdain, half opening his gown, showing a pair of tight red velvet breeches and a green velvet vest that he is wearing. Here again is a sort of lounging dress to perform my morning exercises in. It is elegant. Lackey? Sir? The other lackey. Sir? Hold my robe. To the masters. Do you think I look good? Very well. No one could look better. Now, let's have a look at your little show. I would like very much for you to listen to a melody. He, indicating his student, has just composed for the serenade that you ordered from me. He's one of my pupils who has an admirable talent for these kinds of things. Yes, but you should not have had that done by a pupil. You yourself were none too good for that piece of work. <laughs> you must not let the name of pupil fool you, sir. Pupils of this sort know as much as the greatest masters, and the melody is as fine as could be made. Just listen. Monsieur Jourdain to lackeys. Give me my robe so I can listen better. Wait, I believe I would be better without a robe. No, give it back. That would be better. Musician, singing. I languish night and day. My suffering is extreme. Since to your control your lovely eyes subjected me. If you thus treat, fair Iris, those you love, Alas, how would you treat an enemy? This song seems to me a little mournful. It lulls to sleep. And I would like it if you could liven it up a little, here and there. It is necessary, sir, that the tune be suited to the words. Someone taught me a perfectly pretty one some time ago. Listen. Now, how does it go? By my faith, I don't know. There are sheep in it. Sheep? Yes. Ah. Uh... He sings. I thought my Jonathan as beautiful as sweet. I thought my Jonathan far sweeter than a sheep. Alas, alas, she is a hundred times, a thousand times, more cruel than tigers in the woods. Isn't it pretty? The prettiest in the world. And you sing it well. It's without having learned music. You ought to learn it, sir, as you are learning dancing. They are two arts which have a close connection. 
and which open the mind of a man to fine things and do people of quality learn music too yes sir i'll learn it then but i don't know when i can find time for besides the fencing master who's teaching me i have also engaged a master of philosophy who is to begin this morning philosophy is something but music sir music music and dancing music and dancing that's all that's necessary there's nothing so useful in a state as music there is nothing so necessary to men as dancing without music a state cannot subsist without the dance a man can do nothing all the disorders all the wars one sees in this world happen only from not learning music all the misfortunes of mankind all the dreadful disasters that fill the history books the blunders of politicians and the faults of a mission of great commanders all this comes from not knowing how to dance how is that does not war result from a lack of agreement between men that is true and if all men learned music wouldn't that be a means of bringing about harmony and of seeing universal peace in the world you are right when a man has committed a mistake in his conduct in family affairs or in affairs of government of a state or in the command of an army do we not always say he took a bad step in such and such an affair yes that's said and can taking a bad step result from anything but not knowing how to dance it's true you are both right it makes you see the excellence and usefulness of music and the dance i understand that now do you wish to see your pieces yes i have already told you that this is a little attempt i have made to show the different passions that music can express very good music master to musicians here come forward to monsieur jourdain you must imagine that they are dressed as shepherds why always as shepherds you see nothing but that everywhere when we have characters that are to speak in music it's necessary for believability to make them pastoral singing has always been assigned to shepherds and it is scarcely natural dialogue for princes or merchants to sing their passions all right all right let's see dialogue in music a woman and two men a heart under the domination of love is always with a thousand cares oppressed it is said that we gladly languish gladly sigh but despite what can be said there is nothing so sweet as our liberty there is nothing so sweet as the loving fires that make two hearts beat as one one cannot live without amorous desires take love from life you take away the pleasures it would be sweet to submit to love's rule if one could find faithful love but alas o oh, cruel rule no faithful shepherdess is to be seen and that in constant sex much too unworthy must renounce love eternally pleasing or door happy liberty deceitful woman how precious you are to me how you please my heart how horrible you are to me ah leave for love that mortal hate we can we can show you a faithful shepherdess alas where to find her in order to defend our reputation i want to offer you my heart but shepherdess can i believe that it will not be deceitful we'll see through experience who of the two loves best who lacks constancy may the gods destroy with ardors so beautiful let us be inflamed ah how sweet it is to love when two hearts are faithful is that all yes i find it well done and there are some pretty enough sayings in it here for my presentation is a little display of the loveliest movements and the most beautiful attitudes with which a dance can possibly be varied are there shepherds too 
they're whatever you please let's go four dancers execute all the different movements and all the kinds of steps that the dancing master commands and this dance makes the first interlude end of act one